ISO 27001 is one of the most popular security standards in the world. Learn well. ISO 27001 protects your business from threats. Make sure your employees feel safe and helps you close more sales deals. When done incorrectly though, ISO 27001 starts to feel like a curse in the dark ages. A curse that saps your organization's energy, morale, and money. But that's what we're here to solve today. So the course of this video, we'll cover what ISO 27001 is, what usually goes wrong when companies try to get compliant, and how to make the process easier for you with an ISO 27001 implementation checklist that you can download and get started with immediately. ISO 27001 is more needed than ever today as companies experience more data security threats and attacks. Think of all the things you're trying to keep safe every day. Intellectual property, critical data, assets, systems, people, and more. Now think of all the ways these get attacked. Phishing, ransomware, hacking, social engineering, spoofing, malware, etc. ISO 27001 helps companies build and bolster their ISMS or information security management system so they can protect themselves against these risks. ISO 27001 has 93 controls. It is broken down into four sections. Don't get fooled by the small numbers though. ISO 27001 is extremely extensive and takes between six to 24 months in order to get compliant. And ISO 27001 is unique in that while a successful certification does last three years, there's annual recurring surveillance audits that are compulsory in nature. And as more companies dive deeper into the ISO 27001 process, they find that there's several more pitfalls that they can find themselves in. For starters, which do you choose? ISO 27001 or SOC 2? Should you get ISO 27002 and 27701 compliant too? If you do settle on ISO 27001, should you go for the 2013 or the 2022 version? We've made videos for all of these. So if you'd like to get in-depth answers, you can find them in the description below. All of this being said though, the number one thing companies get wrong when choosing to get ISO 27001 compliant is the how. How you get ISO 27001 compliant determines almost every aspect of your experience. From the time it takes, the human capital you will need, the cost you will pay and how much maintenance you'll have to perform. There's three basic approaches to how to do it. Doing it yourself, hiring a consultant, or using compliance automation. Doing it yourself is incredibly difficult, time-consuming and expensive, which is why you don't hear a lot of companies still going that route. Hiring consultants used to be the default approach for companies for several years, but it was still expensive. Consultant fees can go into the tens of thousands of dollars. And since the consultant is only guiding you, you're still doing all of the heavy lifting yourself. In the worst case, which was surprisingly often, companies would end up never getting compliant at all. They'd simply toss the project because after several months and after a year, they'd see no progress. Compliance automation though is the new default and for very good reasons. Since most companies now operate on the cloud, that's where all your data is. So information about your people, about tools, about data, all of that sits in the cloud. Integrating directly into these softwares means that the compliance process is much quicker, requires far less manual work, which makes makes it more expensive and results overall in easier maintenance. Take an example. Imagine you have an HRMS. It has all the information about your employees, when they joined, what their role is, whether they're on maternity leave, when they get deboarded, etc. Without compliance automation, you have to take all of this information, which is important for ISO 27001 compliance, download it, sort it, find a way to put it in some sort of sheet, and then do it for every single audit cycle after. Alternatively, you could use compliance automation. Click one button once and it's done forever. So with this in mind, let's go to the ISO 27001 checklist. We're gonna follow a 10 step process, which remember is also available as a free download from the link below. Step one, find a path and assign a champion. Choose one of the three paths we just explained for your ISO 27001 compliance journey and nominate an internal champion to lead you through the process. Two, define your scope. Determine which of your organization systems, locations, and products are going to fall under the ambit of ISMS. Say only a specific product needs to be compliant or a location needs to get compliant faster than others. This is the step what those are called now. Three, build a register and assess your risks. Managing your risks is a key part of ISO 27001. Conduct an internal risk assessment of your assets and your systems and identify what the likelihood impact and remediation for these risks are. Step four, write up an SOA. Your statement of applicability is a written list of all the ISO 27001 controls you find applicable to your organization and that you're going to implement. You also write about the controls you choose to omit and the reasoning behind that. Step five, document, document, document. ISO 27001 is heavy on documentation. There's lots of policies and procedures you have to set up on your road to compliance. If you do this by yourself or hire a consultant, you'll have to create several. 
or all of these by yourself. If you choose compliance automation, you'll have easy to use templates ready to go. Step six, set up and review your controls. Now that you've compared your policies and systems to the ISO 9701 standard and applied these controls to your own ISMS, it's time for your workplace systems to reflect what you documented. Step seven, train employees on ISO 27001. Training is a common pitfall in the implementation process. Even though security touches multiple job descriptions and is a day-to-day -day activity of many employees, regular training is one way to demonstrate your commitment to cybersecurity and cultivate a culture of safety within your own team. Step eight, undergo an internal audit. An internal audit prepares you for the official audit and tests your new systems and your controls to see if they're working. This can be conducted by an internal team that was not originally a part of setting up and documenting your ISMS or by an independent external reviewer. Step nine, an internal audit. You need an accredited ISO 27000 auditor from a recognized body to conduct a two-step audit. First, then review your documentation and controls. Get a handle in this portion by the audit ahead of time by working through an ISO 27001 stage one audit checklist. Next, the auditor will perform a site audit. They'll perform tests on your controls over a large period of time to make sure that they're being followed. And finally, step 10, maintenance and improvement. ISO 27001 certification lasts three years, but you need to conduct regular risk assessments and surveillance audits while preparing new documentation for your renewal audit in the third year. All of this can seem scary and cumbersome, but there's two ways that Sprinter can help. First, like I mentioned earlier, there's a free downloadable version of the checklist in the description and comment below. If you're looking to start your compliance journey, try Sprinto. By digitizing and automating the compliance process, Sprinto helps companies get ISO 27001 compliant faster and more effectively and empowers them to stay that way too, year round instead of just during an audit cycle. Companies just like yours that get ISO 27001 compliant with Sprinto save up to 80% of their time effort and cost during the compliance process. Learn more by visiting Sprinto.com or by booking a demo with our ISO 27001 experts from the link in the description below. If you found this video useful, remember to like and subscribe or even share the video with somebody else that you know might find it useful too. And as always, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. We'll get back to you as soon as possible.